Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Ayana Janae, and I'm happy to be here. Um, So let's jump right in. Let's talk about sex. Um, (laughs) Let's talk about bad sex in particular. Bad sex, bad relationships. What do these two things have in common other than they can involve one or more persons. Um, the thing that that they have in common, the most in common, I'll say, is that you get out of it what you put in. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you don't speak up about what it is that you want, you're going to have a terrible time. If you don't speak up about what it is that you want and need, you're going to have a terrible time in general. Um, I can recall many a time, (laughs) many a relationship, many a sexual experience where things could have just been so different if I had just, one, um, spoken up about what it is that I needed, but, and, and wanted, but also, um, had some integrity within myself about that, um, and, and kept that boundary, I'll say, um, and honored that. Um, and unfortunately, we don't always do those things, especially in sex and relationship. We try to conform just enough or not make a fuss too much as to not hurt our partner, all the while disregarding our own happiness and our own pleasure. Um, that's unfortunate. Um but we don't have to do that. So how exactly do we combat that? Well, we combat that with love languages. I can, and not just love languages, um, love languages is part of what we're going to talk about today, but we are going to talk about um, how love languages tie into our sexual experiences. Um, I like to call them sex languages. So to get started, let's talk about me. (laughs) <laughs> let's talk about things that I have experienced. So, um, pretty young, um, I'll say relatively young, not pretty young, but relatively young. Um, I'm 23 and with these sexual experiences I've had, um, I won't say they haven't been great. Um, it wasn't until recently that I have reached like not my full sexual potential, but like just being with a partner that understands or just, just immediately knows. Um, and I don't necessarily have to say anything. Um, but (laughs) nobody's perfect because there are times where I do have to say like, listen, (laughs) this is a, this is, this is a no, or this is a yes. But mostly, this is a no. Don't do this. Don't be a butthole in this way. <laughs> um, but in the past, um, I would be so afraid to speak up about things that I wanted and needed 
not just in a relationship, but during sex, because I didn't want to ruffle anybody's feathers. I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings and all these other things. It's just like, honestly, who cares? My pleasure matters at this moment. And if they are not satisfying me, then nobody's having a good time. Because over time, that dissatisfaction is just going to build up and build up and build up into resentment. And then when I get so resentful, I don't even want to do this anymore. I don't want to provide you the pleasure that you need anymore. So now we're just saying, screw it. And and we're just going to move on and 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 drop it all, the, all together. All because I just didn't speak up or the person didn't speak up or whatever the case may be. Just depends on the situation. Um, but in, in the past, um, I acknowledge my part in my dissatisfaction with certain things um, as far as romantic relationships go and sex go sexual relationships even um there was one the the most the most common one is just not telling your partner that you didn't have an orgasm which what i will say is orgasm is not the um purpose for sex like and that sounds weird to say but like sex itself y'all heard me on on the last episode talking about sex magic or my last episode that I was on talking about sex magic and how it is a ritual. It is also a, a tool for connection to your partner or partners. Um, and it's not just about the orgasm. And I say that because if you focus too heavily on the orgasm, uh, you get lost. Just focus on making sure you're having a good time, making sure your partner is having a good time. Um, the orgasm is just going to come inevitably with that in mind. Like, because you are being attentive in that way and being sure to make sure all of your partner's needs are met and also verbalizing your needs so that they can be met as well. If both parties are on the same page in that way, the orgasm, the orgasm is going to come. Don't focus so much on the orgasm. But if you do not have an orgasm, uh, it is important to tell your partner um, because and, and to say, um, like, you know, I did enjoy it. I enjoy being with you, things like that. But I also didn't have an orgasm this time. Um, and if you can pinpoint why you didn't have an orgasm, like, well, this didn't happen or maybe a little extra stimulation here, that just makes for better sex. And it's, that's that's just... The key is we want to have better sex. That is the key. That is it. And if better sex for you means that the focusing on orgasm is necessary, then okay. But uh, from my standpoint, better sex means um, as we grow together in this relationship, connection, whatever the situation may be, um, it as we grow together in that um we excuse me if we miss the mark we make it known or if if or it is made known if we miss the mark and it is made known if we didn't and if we did miss the mark um we learn how to better work with that how to what what to do next um to ensure that we have a better time next time um And if I don't miss the mark, uh, making that known so it can be clear what was done, what needs to be done again. Like, do that thing again. Like, be this way again. Um, But in order to know that, know what you like in that way, what gets you there, um, what makes you have an orgasm, um, it is important to understand just like in any relationship to understand what is necessary for you you have to know what your love language is in sex you have to know what your sex language is or what your love languages and sex languages are um so that's what we're going to talk about on this episode and we're going to take a break and then we're going to jump right back in still on the search of that one true love on the limbo in this crazy world of dating marriage relationships well listen to the golden state media concepts relationship podcast your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships
right, so we are back. So, jump right in. What is a love language? As I discussed um, in the first segment, we're going to talk about what sex languages are. But before we get there, we have to talk about the root and the root of where, well, where I'm, where I am deriving my thought process from is from um, love languages. And what love languages are, are simply how you communicate in your relationship, how you operate in your relationship, um, how you connect with your partner and with self even, because love languages are important in your self-love as well as your partner's love. So what are love languages? If you would like to, I'll just say there's a um, there's a site called fivelovelanguages.com. I can put that in the description. Um, and if you want to take the test uh, to figure out what your love language is or what your like big three are, um, you can do that. I highly recommend it. Um, but the five love languages are concepts um or values that are necessary to us in a relationship and those five are um well first uh they were conceptualized by dr gary chapman um and that's who like the website like who owns the website who created the website uh where you take the quiz and things like that um he also has books if you want to learn more about it um and he also has apology languages. Those are quite recent, but he has those too. Um, and what Dr. Gary Chapman, um, the truth that he presents is, is just one simple truth that he presents. Um, and I'm getting this, if I can be transparent, I'm getting this from the website. So if you read this and you hear these words again, or you read these words again, it's from the website. So these are not my words. Um, Dr. Gary Chapman presents a simple truth. Relationships grow better when we understand each other. Everyone gives and receives love differently, but with a little insight into these differences, we can be confidently equipped to communicate love well. This is true for all forms of relationship, for married or dating, couples, for children and teenagers, for friends and coworkers, for long distance relationships, for those brand new loves, and for the romances that are older than the hills. No matter who you are, there's a book for you. And this just talks about the books that he has about the love languages and things like that. Um, but yeah, he wrote a book about love languages. Um, there's a whole quiz about it. Um, and those love languages help you understand yourself more in relationship and also help you understand your partners more in relationships. And again, it's not just in, for romantic relationships, but we're going to talk, speak in the context of romantic relationships for this episode. So um, if you don't know, the five love languages are quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, gifts, and acts of service. And what those mean, um, they have a set meaning, but sometimes those things can mean different things for different people. Um, cause quality time for one person is not quality time for the next physical touch for one person. is not physical touch for the next words of affirmation for one person and not words of affirmation for the next and so on and so on. And so, uh, it really just depends on who, you know, it just takes being in tune with your partner, getting to know them on that level so that you both have an understanding of what needs to be done in the relationship um, and what you both want and need in order for the relationship to be successful. Um, I took the quiz a few years ago and my big three, um, which are your primary, secondary, and tertiary, are um, quality time. That's my primary um, I think physical touch is my secondary. Yes, physical touch is my secondary. And then words of affirmation is my tertiary. And um, I just, they, they translate in a sexual way as well, which is why I 
have come up with this thought process about sex languages or how love languages um, work in sex um, because they do translate for me. Um, the way I receive love, however, is not the same way that I give love because the way that I give love um, is mainly through, I still give love through quality time, but also my main one is acts of service and gifts. Um, acts of service is one that I'm learning like and becoming more and more um, familiar with in terms of recognizing it because to me it was it's weird to like it's just weird saying it because it's like okay yes this is acts of service these things that you do for other people are acts of service but I just didn't see that as <laughs> that doesn't make sense but <laughs> I just didn't see that as that um before but as I'm growing closer and more in tune with myself, I am understanding like, yeah, acts of service is a thing that I do because I just enjoy doing things for people. I enjoy lightening people's load, taking care of them, loving on them, all of those things. Um, and then quality time is important. Like you have to, in order to build a relationship, that quality time has to be there and not just like talking on the phone. Talking on the phone is great. FaceTiming is great. But sitting no, nothing ever beats face-to-face -face physical connection. Um, and with quality time, I have to be physically present with you in order for that quality time thing to be, that, that quality time aspect to be met. Now, um, again, the way that I give it is not the way that I receive it. So, and vice versa, um, because the way that I receive it, um, for quality time, you have to be there with me in order like that's the way that I receive it the way that I give it I don't mind just being on the phone with you I don't mind <laughs> being there with you um well even for quality time and in, in receiving it being on the phone is fine being on FaceTime is fine I would absolutely however rather you be physically present if you can be now if I'm in a long distance relationship and the only like consistent quality time that we can have is face to face not face to face oh my goodness is um facetime um or over the phone that's fine that's absolutely fine but if i know and you know that you can be physically present with me i prefer for you to be physically present with me um and then physical touch i'm a sap uh if i can Get into my astrology really quick. Uh, my sun is in Taurus, my moon is in Virgo, and my rising sign is in Cancer. In that Cancer, the rising sign tends to, the rising sign tends to be like how we come off to the world, um, and how we come off to the world uh, is is again, it's not it's our rising sign. It's not always the um, sun sign. My rising sign is in Cancer. Cancer is the more affectionate of the the zodiac. Um, very affectionate, very giving. It is the mother of the zodiac. It's considered to be the mother. Um, and so, as a Cancer rising, that emotional, affectionate component of physical touch is very necessary for me. And physical touch does not necessarily just mean sex. Um, even though we're going to speak about it in that context, 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 what are words this morning? <laughs> even though we're going to speak about it in that context, um, physical contact does not just mean sex. Physical touch does not just mean sex. Um, it means simply stroking my arm. Um, there was this guy that I was interacting with and when we would sleep together or cuddle together, he would always like just rub my arm ever so lightly and I would be asleep, but I would like, I would feel it. And it was just, if I wake up out of my sleep and I just feel him like doing that, it lulls me right back to sleep. Um, but it also like awakens the sap in me because it's like, oh, he's touching me while I'm asleep. He's making sure that I am secure and taken care of and I feel safe while I'm asleep. And it's just my touching. And that's, it seems like 
so much like you're reading so much into that little touch like is he really making you feel safe and making sure you're taken care of and stuff like that while just lightly touching your arm yes because that's what it is for me and that's what people's love languages are for them it's a language so this particular thing says this thing to me (laughs) um it communicates this particular thing to me so that particular touch communicates that to me even if they don't know that (laughs) It communicates that to me. And so I live for physical touch, um, for affection, for the light touches while I'm sleeping, for just the random hand holding, um, just kisses, wrapping your arms around my waist and breathing in my neck. Those things. Um, I I live for them. But yeah, uh, you just have to figure out your your love language. And then um, as far as gifts are concerned, um, as I said, I give, give, I I will give and give and give until there is nothing left in me to give. And so I have to know how to set a boundary with it. Um, Because if I really love you in any relationship, money is no object. And I'm the same way sexually as well, but we'll talk about that in the next segment. Um. I will, I will just give and give and give. And even outside of spending money, if I see a song and I, it makes me think of you, I'll send it to you. And this is, that's a gift to you. Um, if I write a poem and then I, it ends up that that poem reminds me of you, um, cause I, I write poetry. Fun fact, I guess. Um, but if I write a poem and I reread it and it turns out like I'm thinking about you while I'm writing the poem or, or I was think I was thinking about you. I'll say while I was writing the poem or the poem just reminds me of you, or it's just something that I think you'll like. I'll send it to you. Um, and that is a gift. I'll make you a playlist and that is a gift. Um, so just, just also with gift giving and gift receiving, I acknowledge that it is the little things. And I guess I do receive, I think I just, all of the love languages are my languages, <laughs> but there are main ways that you can get me. Even with gift giving, though, um, and people, this is the the most hated one, or not the most hated, but like when people hear it, they're like, oh, "But I'm not materialistic. Why is that one of my main three? It's like it's not. It doesn't mean that you're materialistic. Gift giving that aspect is not a materialistic thing. It is the thoughts more so it's like I you took the time to put thought into something for me and you can do the same with quality time physical touch words of affirmation and acts of service it's it's just all of these revolve around taking the time and the effort to pay attention um but you will hear a lot of times like well, one of my love languages is gift giving, and I don't like that because it makes me sound materialistic. And that's again, that's not what it means. Uh, you just value the tangible um, to a degree, and not and, and it's not everything has to be tangible. Tangible, but you do value that which is tangible, and that which has had thought placed into it. So it can't just be tangible and meaningless. It has to be tangible and meaningful, um, and it. Ultimately, just it, it's like a memory for you or a reminder for you, ultimately. So those are the love languages. Now, we're going to take another break. <laughs> we're going to take another break, and then um, we're going to talk about how these tie into sex. So be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. (laughs) 
whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. are back so in the last segment we discussed um the love languages what they are where they came from and how they played out in certain relationships um and how they affect how we operate in relationships and now we're going to tie that into sex with what i call um what i have coined a copyright pending not really, I'm just joking, but um, <clears throat> sex languages, which is really me taking the love languages and applying them to sex, simply put. Um, and so I was thinking about how, again, how we operate in relationships, as I often do, because sex, relationships, all of that, that's my field of study, my area of study. Um, I was thinking about, okay, well, I was thinking about the love languages in reference to relationships as a whole and not just relationships to people, but even relationships to money, Um, which if you'd like, uh, we can discuss that a little on Twitter. Um, But that's that's for another day. But um, yeah, uh, love languages play out in many different ways in our relationships with our friends and our relationships with our family and our relationships with our romantic partners. Um, with finances, with ourselves, and again, with sex. Um, And so I I wanted to break them down myself. And I was like, you know, um, I think this would be a good way for people to better understand themselves sexually and to also improve in in understanding themselves sexually. um, They have the opportunity to improve their sex lives um, and improve furthermore their relationships with their partners um because sex for a lot of relationships is a major component of of the relationship of the romantic relationship um so to jump right in the first one we're going to look at is quality time now how i view this for quality time for quality time for sex languages how this relates to sex um is taking your time um and the in the act of sex and genuinely admiring your partner and embracing the moment with your partner. Sex for me is a very spiritual thing and it is a a moment of connection with my partner and it is important for the senses to be stimulated and part of the senses being stimulated is remaining present and remaining present um, you you begin to act out that that facet of quality time because the major component of quality time is remaining present. So this means um, admiring the eye con- um, and enjoying eye contact with your partner, um, admiring their body, um, taking the time and literally being present with them. And, and embracing all of them. This is my favorite kind of sex. Um, I, if I can be transparent, I very much so enjoy my partner embracing all of me, being present with me, looking me in my eyes. Um, and even, even the quality time aspect tends to tie in the, um, the other languages of physical touch and even words of affirmation, um, gifts, acts of service. Um, each of these, um, tie into one another. They are not mutually exclusive of one another. Um, 
one always feeds into the other. And honestly, with the love languages in any respect, the same can be said. Um, so with this, um, I love being caressed. That's the physical touch aspect of it. I love um, my partner asking me questions. Does this feel good? That is the that is the words of affirmations part of it because it is affirming that one that you are present with me that you are you are honed in and tuned into my energy your energy and this moment that we are sharing and exchanging energy um um the the way that my partner um embraces me while performing oral sex um I, I, it's the details, honestly. Um, it's like if they are enjoying it and they're moaning as they are performing oral sex on me or I, them, um, the moaning of it, it's, it's showing you like, I am embracing all of you and I enjoy it. I am enjoying this moment with you. I am so grateful for this opportunity. Um, so it, it's taking time. Um, it's embracing um, and it's being mindful of the time that you have with your partner and making the most of it in that moment. So next we move to physical touch, uh, which I touched on a little bit in quality time. Um, so soft kisses, caresses, 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 <laughs> um, nibbles, um, I just discovered and, and 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 it's it's a form of sense play um because you get to discover what parts of your body um if stimulated arouse you more. So I recently discovered that I like my ear being licked. That surprised me greatly <laughs> um because it's just never happened. Um and I never thought about it. But I enjoy my ear being licked. Um, and I appreciate this particular partner for sh introducing me to that and in being so in tune with my energy and with my body at that time and wanting to embrace so much of the time that we are, sh that we were sharing together that they made sure that they were physically, um, they were physically attentive to me. Um, and not just that, I, I then learned, um, also with the same partner that I enjoy my toes being sucked. Trigger warning for those who have, who do not have an affinity for feet. Wait, affinity. Yes, who do not have an affinity for feet. I have to check your, your vocabulary sometimes. <laughs> but, um, for those who don't like feet, I'm sorry. Um, but I learned that I like my feet being licked and sucked and kissed on um and I love when this partner does it um and also they they massage my feet um they I love foot massages and so but that's something that I've always liked anyway um but the fact that they do it without me even having to ask um especially like when we're in the act of sex like even even as they are performing oral sex on me or in, in the act of penetration, um, they'll massage my feet or they'll kiss my feet or whatever the case may be. And that just makes the experience so much better. <laughs> um, so physical um, touch is one of my favorites, of course, because sex, <laughs> but it's one of my favorite aspects of sex quality, the quality time because of the being present in the moment, being very laser focused on your partner's energy and your energy and how, how they mesh and how they're being shared with one another, how you're sharing your energies, but also, um, the physical touch aspect of it and then also words of affirmation words of affirmation is a great one for me um for this i think of encouragement during sex uh so think about if your partner is with you and, and they're like oh does that ask them does it feel good but also um dirty get dirty with it if, if necessary if that's your thing because some people don't, don't don't do dirty talk well some people don't dirty don't talk at all during sex. Um, and that's just because maybe it's just not 
they maybe they never felt like they were in the space to do it um or they never felt free enough to do it which is not something that they like um but for me words of affirmation are good my partner letting me know how good how good they feel in the moment how good I'm making them feel in the moment and also me letting my partner know in the moment what feels good um and just and and moans can encourage that and so I say that specifically because there are a lot of men um in particular who don't moan there are a lot of women who don't feel free enough to moan but there are specifically a lot of men who don't feel free enough to moan men moan I promise it's great and in if especially if you are with a partner whose love language um or sexual love language or, or sexual love language sex language um is more so in the in the realm of words of affirmation and again it doesn't have to be definite or exclusively words of affirmation but like if that's important to them um moaning will be very beneficial for you because it will it will fulfill that aspect that that is necessary that 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 encouragement and knowing that you are the moaning also lets you know lets your partner know that you are present in the moment um and not just spaced out or anything like that um so yeah words of affirmation again encouragement moaning talking dirty um And it doesn't have to just be, I mean, there are languages, but like, again, it doesn't have to be coherent words. (laughs) Like, and when I I say coherent, I don't mean um, inebriated or anything of that nature. Um, But I do mean like, you don't have to understand what's being said. (laughs) But if you hear a no, stop. Um, If you hear a no, a stop or whatever, stop. But um, if you... If if you if it feels so good to your partner that they are making these inaudible noises, uh, sounds, you can't really comprehend the words that they're saying, but they are moaning, so it sounds like they're having a good time. Um, even I I even count that as words of affirmation, um, because sometimes when you're left speechless, that's the best, um. So we have quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation. We have gifts. Now, when I think about gifts, I think about um, bringing things into the bedroom, setting the mood, uh, setting. And in this aspect also ties into the quality time, um, particularly the the importance of being present. Um, again, I say, be sure to appease the senses. So gifts in this sense can be bringing aromatherapeutic candles into this into the space um a particular type of lighting and that's even in details because if you know that your partner is very in tune with the senses in that way you are gifting them with that as i'm putting y'all up on game y'all better listen to me um but (laughs) um even bringing toys into the space um using oils um all of these things candle wax play i consider these things as bringing gifts because again it shows that you are paying attention to detail in a way that that uh will appease your partner you're you're paying attention to detail and knowing that if i bring these things in or if i set the mood in this way for my partner they'll love it and 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 knowing that they love it we're gonna have an even better experience um see and then and that can also tie into gifts can gifts and acts of service can also kind of go hand in hand um because if you know your partner enjoys oral sex performing the act of oral sex on your partner um or or if your partner loves rubbing their feet being rubbed performing uh the act of their feet being rubbed it's a gift but it's also a service to them you're taking care of them um and and But also acts of service points to um, making your partner's load lighter, essentially. Um, And this can kind of tie into a, this can kind of be foreplay um, if you, if you view it. 
in a particular light. So think about how um, if you're a married couple and you know your partner loves it when you do the dishes or when you do something around the house for them. They, you don't do it often, um, but you do that. You do that one day. You just do the dishes, take out the trash, whatever. Um, and you just do this thing that lightens their load for that day or for that night or whatever. But also you provide them the gift of running a bubble bath. And with that bubble bath, you, you're you also ap- appealing to their senses, um, especially if you use, again, candles, rose petals, um, oils, uh, bath salts, um, bath bombs, whatever the case may be and say I, I I did this or I did these things around the house and I also ran a bath for you to make sure that you were relaxed and unwind and I just wanted to take care of you tonight to make sure you were well um that's I don't know about other people that's foreplay for me I'm not married or anything but like doing something doing things for me <laughs> um just to lighten my load being a person who has taken care of people a lot or is just so used to doing things for other people having things done for me um it just feels really good and particularly if I'm already attracted to you or I'm dating you or we're sexually intimate already um if you do that um I'm definitely getting turned on um and and that's just that and whatever happens next (laughs) it just happens (laughs) um so yeah, those are the uh, the love languages that tie into sex, or at least how I view the love languages as they are connected to sex. So uh, we're going to take another short break, and then um, I'm going to talk about how discovering my sex language has helped me um, in further understanding myself and in improving my sex life. So, uh, if you want to be nosy, come right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The DSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSNC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. All right, guys, we are back. Um, In the last segment, I talked about um, the love languages as they tied into sex or sex languages, as I like to call them. Um, Quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, acts of service and gifts. And also we talked about how they tie into one another. They're not mutually exclusive with one another. Um, they, They will always overlap to some degree, particularly with sex. And so to wrap this thing on up, um, I'm going to talk a bit about how discovering this aspect of sex um, or how these love languages affect me sexually, um, how it's improved my sex life. So um, before I thought about these things, I really just thought like, I just like sex. I wasn't really aware of what what part of sex I liked like what do I like about the sex like what it it was just for and for me the ultimate thing that I like about sex is the connection the intimacy but also as a person who understands that 
intimacy um, is found in areas other than sex. It's not my end all be all. It's not my important thing. Uh, my Well, my most important thing. <clears throat> But it is important to me because it is a form of connection for me. And so, but also, uh, if you listen to my prior episode about sex magic, it is also a ritual for me. So I try to be very aware of the energies uh, taking place sexually between my partner and myself, um, whether they know it or not. Um, I try to be very aware because if the energy is a bit off, I won't do it and and it's just because of how spiritual sex is to me if the energy is off i'll I'll feel really weird um i'll feel weird even performing oral sex and i love it but it'll just it it'll just feel weird to me so if the energy is not in the best place uh, i won't necessarily have sex um at all so i my my desire I don't care how horny I am my desires don't control me in that way um because I know what the outcome of sex can be um in a spiritual sense in a magical sense um and I know that depending on my part like I if I'm having sex with you I trust you to some degree but also I trust you enough to share this energy with you of whatever it is that I'm trying to manifest and if you come in trying and you got some negative energy and that negative energy manifests it's not gonna happen but uh anyway these these sex languages understanding them in this way I'll say understanding the love languages from this lens um has helped me realize what I love about sex, what I don't like about it. Um, And mainly, the main thing that I don't like about it is just how it's culturally viewed, Um, which is why I do this podcast and just do what I do. Um, But it has taught me um, to value myself, to pay attention to what it is that I need. Um, which only came from me wondering what I like about sex. Um, so again, I, I thought I was a person who just liked sex because I it just it just felt good. Um, which this again, the physical touch aspect, the sensations, the sense of it, the senses engaging with the senses is very important to me because I'm a Taurus. I am of a Venusian energy um, or Venus energy, um, and what feels good, pleasure, satisfaction, it's very important to me, period. Um, and so I thought I was a person who was just always like, you know, I just I just like sex because it's something that feels good. Um, or it always feels good when I have it, I'll say, because sex doesn't always feel good for everybody. But it feels good for me um, when I have it. So I just like sex. But really, I like the connection of it. And I like... Um, how I can gauge my connections with people um, and even with myself um, by by simply paying. So, and what I mean by that is if, if my partner is not someone, if, my, if I notice that my partner is not a person who is, um, who has the same sex language as me, um, it can kind of tell me a bit about what the energy would be like with, between us sexually. Um, or not my partner, but anybody that I'm interested in, if if their sex language is not similar to mine, or if I can kind of see that off the bat, um, I won't engage at all. And it's a, that's that aspect of knowing what's best for me and being more in tune with myself and valuing myself more. Because I don't want to engage with anyone who I can't connect with. Um again the importance of sex for me or the thing uh, first the thing uh, I like about sex being connection and so it'll cause me to imagine like what other things won't we connect on and all this other stuff all this other stuff um so uh yeah how to better value myself um value the energies that come to me um because I want to know that the energy that I'm welcoming in is one of love 
um, and one of positivity um, and one that's going to love on me in the way that I need and desire as I will love on them in the way that they need and desire. Um, and also it's just taught me to be a better lover. It's taught me to be more attentive. Um, which I couldn't imagine being more attentive than, than I am, but it, it, it has, it has made me be more attentive. Um, just simply knowing that there are different or viewing them this way, viewing sex languages this way, knowing that every, just like everyone has a different love language or a different love language that is important to them. Everybody has a different sex language that is important to them. And so it teaches me to, it has taught me to be more aware of my partner in that way. And if I'm more aware of my partner and make sure that they are more aware, well, first, if I am more aware of me and I'm then more aware of my partner and make sure that they are also more aware of me and uh, most importantly, aware of themselves, we can have better sex, better sex. And again, as I said, better sex, aside from education, better sex is why we're here. So, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am so grateful to them, and I'm so grateful to you all, and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.